So here I am, sitting on the side of the road, waiting for my bus handout, and he just drives right by me. So the next bus is in two hours, and oh well. I now have to show you more very cool things in this area. The first very cool thing we're gonna see is this beautiful church. So it's a Presbyterian church. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I know it has a really pretty stained glass. It has a really pretty front. And we're gonna go and see what the side looks like of this church. So I'm pretty sure this church is still used today. I mean, obviously it's not a religious day for the Presbyterians and that's why it's closed. I want to show you now something that's probably not used today, but it's still an old church. So let's go walk over there. So this is the church that we just saw. Now, that church was mostly built for Queen Victoria and Prince Albert so they could have a place to worship while they were just staying in their castle right across the road. Now, I mentioned before this area has been inhabited by people for a very long time and by a bunch of aristocrats. So where did the people before Prince Victoria, whoa, Prince Vic, Queen. <laughs> so where did people before Queen Victoria go to church? That is where we are going now because this place has been around for a while. So the church that we're walking to in front of us, I hope you can see it with the sun. The sun is doing some weird things as we have a massive winter storm coming in. Um, this was built around the 1500s. So if you think of like, what would a medieval church look like? This. Okay, maybe like a roof on it and some sort of stuff. But what we're doing now is approaching the graveyard. And this is the newer graveyard. Are we able to go in? Oh, guys, it's the Puerta Abierta. Mm. Oh, Puerta be Abierta. Puerta's not Abierta. Puerta's Abierta. The Puerta's mostly Abierta. Oh, Puerta's stuck. Okay. No Abierta Puerto. We'll go try another way. So in front of us, this is the ruins of the church that we're trying to get into. And I'm not successful yet to get in this Puerta. Puerta. Why aren't you all here to Puerta? I really would like to see inside you. Maybe this is why there's tourist season and not tourist season. But in defense of people who don't like to travel in a high tourist season, maybe one day I will open up a tourist attraction and I will only have it open during non-tourist season. Yes, that sounds like a plan. Okay, I'm gonna go around this creepy corner and let's see if we can get into the kirk this way. And while we couldn't really get into the church there, we're just taking a little walk around these nice little walls. All around in the north of the UK, you see a lot of these stone walls built up and it dates back more to the Bronze Age, whenever they would divide fields this way and just like different rock structures, even Stonehenge and a lot of the other uh, rock circle areas, they date all the way back to that. So today, you know, they've just kept up the walls for the past thousand years and it is a nice little privacy wall it keeps sheep from wandering into a different pasture and it keeps horses from wandering into a different pasture and i find it beautiful and just so northern uk like it's absolutely cool so i mentioned stone circles now stonehenge i think the recent news is that it was used for some religious ceremony thing or whatever but a lot of the other stone circles were used for things like for auction they were used for trade they were used for meeting places and a lot of them were built on top of a hill so people around could see what was going on. Now we're in Aberdeenshire and in this area, this is where like the most number of stone circles are left existing. 
So if I can make the buses work for me, we're gonna go see one. And if I can't, then I'm just gonna paste you some photos from Scottish Tourism site, and then you can see what I'm talking about, and then you should go see them. So where we're walking, in this whole area, I don't know the history behind it, and I need you guys to tell me what it is, but up here in Aberdeenshire, there's something extremely unique. Now there's these, all of these really white foot bridges. Now look where we're at, like everything here is beautiful, green and lush, stone walls, beautiful trees, like beautiful greenery and stuff. And then whenever you see one of these white foot bridges, you're just like, what? What is that? It looks very Victorian. So I'm certain it has something to do with Queen Victoria. And we're gonna go see one. So, soon. Jump cut! So right now the footbridge is closed. So we're gonna go in this little side entryway so I can get you to see what I'm talking about because it's very cool. And, okay, you can see it starting to appear. Now all of the bridges are like this. They're just as white as you can guess. See, white as imagine. They are as white as you can imagine. And obviously like they need some help. They get tired and that's why this one is being redone. In the summer during uh, high tourist season, that's when it'll be open. So if you plan on going, then go in high tourist season summer. Oh, okay. I don't know if this is electrocuted. It's making some noise. So we're just gonna go over here. A lot of the fences in this area are electric and I don't care to be a battery. So here's what I'm talking about, where a lot of the bridges are just like massively white. But isn't it pretty? I still have like a long time to kill before my bus comes. So we are gonna go experience. I don't think it's electrocuted. Okay, so now we're over the fence. I'm alive. And let's go get a prettier photo of this massively beautiful River D. Not to be confused with River E. It's really hard to explain how pretty this is. So in the UK, we have something here called public land. And unless it's marked private, every land in the area is public. You need to be, be respectful and not be a dick, but it allows you to go on lush carpets of grass like this. I've never seen a carpet of grass that looks more like The Hobbit than where we're at now. It's, we're gonna have to touch it. It's so soft. I've never seen this, you guys. This is beautiful. I mean, just look around us. And I'm walking now on this nice, soft, squishy grass. What? So unlike where I was just at, where I could hear my feet step everywhere, this is just nice and peaty. It's actually probably peat. Look how clear that water is. I drink that. I mean, if you haven't noticed, my face looks like death today. See, last night I had a little bit of food poisoning and someone didn't sleep very well. So, uh, yeah, kind of tired. What could more poison water do to me than whatever food I had yesterday has done to me? Probably nothing. Maybe I should find out. You guys, it's like the Shire. We're back in the Hobbit. New Zealand or Scotland? 
You can figure that out yourself. So in theory, I should be able to walk to the next bus stop. Now, I don't know if that's actually possible, but the worst case is that I miss my next bus and I just have to wait again, or that I go try to find a friend that's going back. Look how beautiful this is. How can I miss an opportunity not to walk by the beautiful river, the River D that flows directly into the North Sea. So that didn't work out so well. I was walking along and it was beautiful and I was almost to my bus stop. And then there was this massive fence with like three locks on it and it was clear that the owner did not want anybody intruding in his field. So guess we're not going that way. So I'm now walking quickly back through the very green place to hopefully catch the next bus. And if we don't catch it, then I'll just find a nice friend. And the nice friend will drive me to where I want to be. Like a queen. I assume a queen has a driver, and so I will be one too. Yay, I caught the bus. So now I am on my way back to town. And then maybe I'll go do another adventure. So I kind of lied. The bus came, but it wasn't the bus that I wanted to come. So I've gotten off in a town that looked like it had something cool to show you. I'm about to get hit by a car, that car. Okay, I'm safe. So I'm gonna show you something. I mentioned a little bit ago that Victoria spawned up so many different monuments to Albert. Now in this little town, the bus driver drove by one. I had like three or four stops to get off of and I decided to get off this one because of what's in front of us. So this little shrine that we see in front of us, boonk, that thingy, is a shrine for Mr. Prince Albert. And you can tell it's for him because it has his monogram up top. So you see that little upside down A at the very top, or the right side up A, upside down B at the very top? That is for Albert. So here we can see a variety of different things. We can go visit Scotland. We can go to the library. This is the town we're in. It could be called Bolliter, but we're over here. Specifically, I'm here. And there's about a little tiny square block folder that we can walk in and a lot of different walking trails. So if you're into walking, come here. Wear shoes that are good in soggy, foggy areas. If you want to rent a bicycle, there's a bicycle station you can rent bicycles at. This is a very beautiful shot. Victoria Hall, established 1895. And now this is like a community center. The hall next to it, this, so this is Victoria Hall. This is for Mr. Prince Albert, his hall. Let's go inside here. Because it's a tourist place. So this building that we're in, now operates as a library and a gift shop. But what it used to be is the old railway station that Queen Victoria took up. And here we see one of the old railway cars.
So here would be the royal waiting room where they would wait for their train. Looks more like a dining room. I like here we see a lot of the older advertisements. It's quicker by rail. Yeah, it really is. Aberdeen, we'll go there tomorrow. It's not gonna look as beachy. But one of the things to note about Aberdeen when we get there is it has a lot of beaches. But we're not there yet. We're up here in Ballister. Ballister is a very cute little town. If you're into little towns, I highly, highly, highly recommend coming here. There's little gnomes, renting little houses. There's a lot of variety of things you can buy. There's a lot of wool workshops. is very pretty you guys if you're into buying stuff for a house highly recommend that shop there's a hostel I got a little distracted walking around town I hope I didn't miss my bus again <laughs> um, if I did the town is very beautiful and I think it's gonna be a really good sunset because the clouds are pretty low, like you can see behind me. Already in front of us, we can see how the sun is going to set. One thing I find unique about this area is that a lot of the dead trees are shades of purple and red, and it matches the brick so well in the buildings. So, I mean, worst case, I stay here watch the sunset and figure out how to get to my next destination later. Best case, I get to my next destination sooner and I get to have food that hopefully won't poison me.